This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices edged higher on Thursday on concerns about escalating conflict in the Middle East with more attacks on Gaza and on shipping in the Red Sea, even as a surprise build in U.S. crude stockpiles capped gains. Brent crude futures gained 48 cents, or 0.48 percent, to $77.17 a barrel at 0510 GMT, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 32 cents, or 0.45 percent, to $71.69 a barrel. The benchmark settled lower on Wednesday after a surprise jump in U.S. crude stockpiles raised worries about demand in the largest oil market. U.S. crude oil stockpiles rose unexpectedly last week and fuel inventories grew by more than expected, with distillates building to their highest level in over two years, the Energy Information Administration, AIA, said on Wednesday. Crude inventories rose by 1.3 million barrels in the week ended January 5 to 432.4 million barrels, the AIA said, compared with analysts' expectations in a Reuters poll for a 700,000-barrel drop. The surprise stock build caused crude futures to turn negative. Earlier in the session, both benchmarks were up by more than $1 a barrel. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The head of the largest U.S. oil and gas lobby group on Wednesday said that if regulators slow down or stop approving liquefied natural gas exports, they will put allies in Europe and Asia at risk. American Petroleum Institute President Mike Summers issued the warning in response to media reports this week that the administration of President Joe Biden, a Democrat, is considering whether to weigh climate change criteria in approvals for LNG terminals or expansions. Halting US LNG approvals would put our allies at risk. This should not be controversial, Summers said at an API event focused on top issues for 2024, adding that US LNG exports help reduce global emissions by displacing coal overseas. Global renewable energy capacity is expected to grow by two and a half times by 2030 but governments need to go further to achieve a goal of tripling it by then agreed at United Nations Climate Talks, the International Energy Agency, IEA, said. In its annual Renewable Energy Outlook report, the IEA said new capacity added last year increased by 50 percent from the previous year to 510 gigawatts, GW. That takes installed capacity to 3,700 gigawatts. Under current policies and market conditions, global renewables capacity is forecast to grow to a total of 7,300 gigawatts by 2028. To reach the 2030 goal agreed last year, it will require reaching at least 11,000 gigawatts. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The share of available aluminium stocks of Russian origin in London Metal Exchange approved, LME, warehouses rose to 90.4% in December from 78.8% in November, data on the exchange's website showed on Wednesday. The rise follows a restriction imposed by Britain from December 15 on UK entities and individuals taking physical delivery of Russian-made base metals, part of wider sanctions on Moscow for its war in Ukraine. The crackdown along with muted demand in the physical market contributed to additional deliveries to the LME-registered warehouses, dubbed as a market of last resort. India's Federal Ministry of Steel has no immediate plans to seek higher taxes on imported steel even though the country has become a net importer of the alloy due to rising shipments from overseas, particularly China, a senior government source said. India's top steel producers have asked the government to impose higher taxes on imports to curb overseas supplies coming into the world's second biggest crude steel producer. However, the steel ministry has not sent a proposal for the imposition of higher taxes to the finance ministry at this stage due to brisk domestic demand, the source, who has direct knowledge of the matter, said. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Chicago soybean futures regained some ground on Thursday but remained near their lowest levels since December 2021 amid lacklustre demand for U.S. exports and an improved supply outlook from South America. Corn futures rose but were close to their lowest since December 2020. Wheat also gained. 
the most active soybean contract on the Chicago Board of Trade, CBOT, SV1 was up 0.9% at $12.47 minus one quarter a bushel by 0404 GMT after slipping to $12.34 on Tuesday. However, prices were still down nearly 4% so far this month. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.